a world of living things. The animal kingdom is divided into two groups. The first group are animals with a backbone. We call these animals vertebrates or vertebrate animals because they have a backbone. The second group of animals are animals without a backbone. And we call these animals invertebrates or animals without a backbone, invertebrates. Today, we're going to learn about the invertebrate animals or the invertebrates, animals that are invertebrates. They have no backbone. Here are some amazing facts about invertebrate animals. Invertebrate animals make up over 95% of all the animals on the planet. In other words, if you had 100 animals in front of you, 95 of those would be animals without a backbone. 95%. Some of these are so tiny you can only see them with a microscope. The largest invertebrate is the giant squid, which can grow bigger than the Lothian bus. It's incredible. Many invertebrates have soft, squishy bodies, and they often have a hard shell or exoskeleton to protect themselves. And believe it or not, some invertebrates have no head. There are lots of different types of invertebrate animals. Some of these have very strange scientific names, but you will have seen many of them before. Here are just some of them. One group is mollusks. This group includes slugs and snails as well as shellfish. They have soft bodies that they need to keep moist to stay alive. Many mollusks have a hard shell to protect them. We live in Musselburgh, and mussels are also a mollusk. Another slippery and slimy group are annelids. We often call this group worms. They have no legs and a soft body made up of lots of little sections, which we call segments. They have segmented bodies. Another group are the echinoderms. Echinoderms. This is a group of sea creatures that are covered in a tough spiny skin. Their bodies have five identical parts, and as you can see from the picture, starfish are a member of this group, as well as sea urchins. We have now arrived at my favorite group of animals, the arthropods. The arthropods is a big group of in invertebrates that have a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton, and this simply means that they have an outside skeleton. They also have jointed legs. There are lots of groups of arthropods that you already know. Can you guess any of them? There are insects. There are over a million different species of insects and new ones being discovered all the time. They usually hatch from eggs which develop into larvae before becoming adults. Adult insects have six legs and many can fly. Then we have arachnids. This is the spider family. Ooh, for many of you, I love spiders. They have eight legs and two sections to their body, called a head and an abdomen. Many of them spin webs to catch their prey. Tarantulas and scorpions are in this family as well. Another group of arthropods are the crustaceans. Crustaceans. This group have a hard shell and most of them live in the sea. Crabs and lobsters and shrimp are in this group. Wood lice are a type of land-living crustacean. As we've seen from the previous slides, scientists have classified all these animals into their groups according to their similarities and differences. What about them is the same and what about them is different? And now it's your turn. 
Your task is to go on a bug hunt. How many different types of invertebrates can you find? Can you use their features or characteristics to work out which type of creature you found and what group it belongs to? Here is some equipment that may help you on your bug hunt. A paintbrush or a plastic spoon is a good way to pick up the creatures without hurting them. A net can be a handy way to trap flying creatures. And pots with magnifying lids can be great for taking close, a close look at the invertebrates. Empty yogurt pots can make good collecting pots too. Just anything that you can collect and put the insects inside and give you a chance to, uh, to look at them before they escape. Good places to look for invertebrate animals are in the long grass or in amongst the dead leaves, under flower pots or stones, and in the soil, on flowers or on the bark of trees, under the trees and shrubs, and in wood piles. Just be careful when moving things around, especially bigger rocks, so that you don't hurt yourself. Hunt with a partner if you can, and try to find at least three different invertebrate animals, three different creatures. Now this is important. Always, always treat creatures with gently and with respect. They are living things. Remember where you found them. That place is their natural habitat or their home. And if possible, return them to their habitat later. Be sure to upload pictures of your specimens onto your Google Classroom. And then you can see what others have found and they can see what you've found. You will be able to use an invertebrate key like the one here to identify your specimens. Okay, now this is a branch key or a dichotomous key, and you're just going to follow the choices, reading the questions, and if it's yes, you go one direction. If it's no, you go the other. This is a branch key, and this is a key, to a system that we as scientists use to identify almost all living organisms. Good hunting, boys and girls. I'm so looking forward to seeing the invertebrate animals that you find.